Hey everyone, it's story time. I'm so glad you are joining me this afternoon for a couple more chapters of Little Pilgrim's Progress and then we will have an indescribable devotion. Let's crack on and find out who Little Christian is going to meet on his pilgrimage today. Little Christian comes to the palace beautiful. The loss of his role made poor little Christian very miserable. He forgot all about the lions in his trouble and can think only of his carelessness in losing the most precious of the king's gifts. Suddenly, he remembered the shady arbour in which he had spent the afternoon. Perhaps the role might have fallen there and when he started up so hurriedly, he might not have seen it. Oh, how could I be so foolish, he cried. I ought only to have rested there, and I wasted so much time, and now it will be night before I reach the top of the hill. He turned around and went back slowly, looking carefully at the path, lest he might have dropped the roll on, its way, on his way. At last he reached the arbour. And there, upon the floor, just under the bench upon which he had been sitting, he saw his lost treasure. We may fancy how eagerly he caught it up and how thankful he felt to the king for letting him find it again. But his search for the roll had hindered the little pilgrim, and although he climbed the steep path once more as quickly as he could, the sun had gone out of sight before he reached the top of the hill and the light was fading fast. It is all my own fault, he thought. If I had not been so idle, I should not have lost my role and I might have had time to find a place to rest before it was dark. Then he remembered the lions and he wondered how far he was from the spot where they lay. He knew that these savage beasts always prowled about in search of their prey during the darkness and as the shadows grew deeper and deeper round him, he felt more and more afraid. Just when the light had become very dim indeed, a large building appeared in the distance and as Christian hurried along, he saw that it was a great palace and that the way of the king would lead him close to its gates. A little cottage stood within the gates, which he supposed must be the, do do the doorkeeper's lodge, and he walked quickly towards it, hoping that he might be allowed to stay for the night. The path now became very narrow indeed, and when he'd almost reached the palace gates, Christian saw the two lions, which had so frightened mistrust and timorous, lying just before him. One on each side of the way. The lions were changed, chained, but it was too dark for the chains to be seen and little Christian stood still, wondering what he should do. There was only a very small space between the lions and he thought that if he ventured to pass them they would surely spring upon him. The name of the doorkeeper was Watchful and he knew how much the pilgrims feared the lions so he came very often to the door of his house to see if anyone was coming near. When he saw little Christian, he called to him saying, Don't be afraid, the lions are both chained. Keep in the middle of the path and they will not hurt you. So Christian went on, trembling and very much afraid, but he was careful to keep in the middle of the path. And although the great creatures roared as he walked between them, they lay still and did not even stretch out their huge paws to touch him. When he had passed the lions, little Christian clapped his hands for joy and ran quickly towards the kind doorkeeper who stood at the gates. What palace is this? he asked. It's called the Palace Beautiful, said Watchful, and it, begot, begin, it belongs to the king. He built it for his pilgrims to use. Are you going to the Celestial City? Yes, answered little Christian. I slept last night at the house of the interpreter. Do you think I might stay here until the morning? 
How is it that you're travelling so late? asked the porter. Then little Christian had to tell of his idleness in the afternoon and how he had lost his role and had been obliged to go back and look for it. Well, said Watchful, I will call the lady of the house and if you're one of the king's little pilgrims, she will take care of you. So they went to the door of the palace and the doorkeeper rang the bell. New Friends Little Christian waited by the side of Watchful in the porch of the Palace Beautiful and presently a lady came out to speak to them. Her name was Discretion and when Christian looked up at her he thought her face was the sweetest he'd ever seen. Why did you call me? she asked. Then, seeing little Christian, she put out a hand and laid it gently on his shoulder. She's like my mother's picture, he thought. I am sure I shall love her. Watchful answered his mistress, saying, This boy is journeying to the celestial city, and it is too late for him to walk any further tonight, so he would be glad to stay here if you are willing to take him in. Then Discretion asked little Christian many questions. She wished to know from what city he'd come and why he had left his home. She also asked him who directed him into the way of the king and she made him tell her of all that had happened to him on his journey. And what is your name, she said at last. Christian, he replied. I shall be so very glad if I may stay here until the morning. Yes, you may stay, answered Discretion, smiling at the boy's anxious little face. Wait and I will call my daughters. She went back into the house and brought out three girls. Two of them were older than Christian. Their names were Piety and Prudence. Charity, the youngest, was just about his own age. This is one of the king's little pilgrims, said Discretion. I think we can make room for him in the palace, can we not? Oh, yes, said Prudence, and Charity ran up to him and put her hand in his, as Christian, Christiana used to do when he was at home. Come in, said Piety. We are very glad to see you. A number of people were in the hall of the palace, and they all looked kindly at little Christian as he came in. Mother takes care of them, said Charity. We girls look after the little pilgrims. It's not quite time for supper, said Discretion, but no doubt Christian is tired. Take him into your own room and let him rest. The three girls led the way to a comfortable room where a lamp was burning and casting its cheerful light upon the walls that were covered with beautiful pictures. Here Christian sat down while Piety and Prudence took up the needlework that they'd laid aside when their mother had called for them. Charity brought a footstool and seated herself near to Christian. She was a kind-hearted little girl and loved to spend her time in waiting upon her mother's guests and in doing all she could to make them happy. If you're not too tired to talk, said Piety, we should like to hear about your journey. What made you leave your home? I was frightened, answered Christian, for the strangers who came to our city used to tell us that it would be destroyed. And how is it that you thought of coming into the way of the king? I'd read of the celestial city in my book, and one day Evangelist met me, and he showed me the way to the wicket gate. Did you stay at the house of the interpreter? Oh yes, said Christian. He was very kind to me. I saw the picture of the good shepherd, and I watched the soldier who fought his way into the palace. I wish I could have stayed there a long time. And what have you done today? First, I passed by the cross and there I lost my burden and the shining ones brought me these new white clothes. They gave me a message from the king and one of them set his mark upon my forehead. After that, I found three boys sleeping by the wayside. I tried to wake them, but they would not listen to me. Then formalist and hypocrisy climbed over the wall, but I think they chose the wrong path when we came to the hill, for I did not see them again. The hill is hard to climb, said Piety. Yes, I thought I should never get up. And then, when I saw the lions, I very nearly turned back again. But the keeper called to me and told me they were chained. 
Then Prudence began to question the little pilgrim. Do you ever think of your old home? she asked. Yes, said Christian, I often think about it. Have you sometimes wished to go back again? Once or twice, when I've been very tired. But I'm sure the celestial city is far better than ours, and I know I shall be happy when I get there. Why shall you be happy? I shall see the prince, said little Christian. It was so cruel for the wicked people to nail him to the cross, and I love him because he died for our sakes. And my mother is with the king. She went away when I was a baby, but I shall know her because I have seen her picture. Have you any little sisters? said Charity. No, but Christiana used to play with me. She's kind and gentle. Why didn't you bring her with you? said Charity. Then you would have had someone to talk or to on the way. She did not believe what the stranger said, replied Christian, and she has her brothers to take care of. They have no father or mother, and Christiana has to do everything herself. Didn't you talk to her and beg her to come with you? I often told her about the city, but you know, I might not have come myself if Evangelist had not shown me the way. And then I started at once, so that I didn't even say goodbye to Christiana. Well, perhaps Evangelist will find her, and then she will come and bring her brothers with her. Just at this moment, a bell rang, and the two older girls folded up their work, saying, This is to tell us that our supper is ready. Little Christian was hungry as well as tired, and he enjoyed the good food that was set before him. Then Discretion herself took him upstairs into a pleasant room with a window looking towards the east. And there the weary little pilgrim slept soundly until he was wakened by the light of the rising sun. And now on to our devotion. And this evening it's called Just Breathe. Isaiah 40 verse 31. The people who trust the Lord will become strong again. They will be able to rise up as an eagle in the sky. They will run without needing rest. They will walk without becoming tired. Breathing. It's something you do every day, all day long, whether you're awake or asleep. When you breathe in air, which is full of oxygen, it travels in through your nose, or your mouth if your nose is stuffy, and into your lungs. Your lungs send the oxygen from the air to every cell in your body to give them energy. As your cells use up the oxygen, they make a waste gas called carbon dioxide. That's what you breathe out. Your brain actually tells you how fast to breathe. When you exercise or get frightened or get excited, your cells need more energy and thus more oxygen. So your brain tells your lungs to breathe faster. But when you're asleep, you don't need as much energy and your brain tells your lungs to slow down. Breathing isn't something you really have to think about though. Aren't you glad God made your body that way? But sometimes it gets hard to breathe. Have you ever faced a problem so big that it felt hard to breathe? Or have you ever been so frightened or felt so lonely that you just couldn't seem to catch your breath? When it gets hard to breathe, stop everything and go to God. Pray and tell him everything you're feeling. Then just sit quietly with him. He'll help you catch your breath and then he'll give you the strength to take the next breath and the next one and then one more. God won't let you go. Not ever. And he'll bring you safely through whatever trouble you're facing. That's not just a promise. It's God's promise to you. And God never goes back on his promises. The av or be amazed, the average person can hold his or her breath for 30 seconds. But the Guinness World Record, now they could be out of date from when this book was written, belongs to Ale 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 Alex Segura Vendrell, 
I hope he's not listening to this because he'd be really offended by the way I've uh, read his name. He held his breath for 24 minutes and 3.45 seconds in Barcelona, Spain in February 2016. Now that's some lung power. And you might actually, you might be interested to check who holds the breath. Uh, holds the breath, holds the Guinness record, world record for holding their breath. Nobody's going to hold the breath, are they? Oh dear. Ah, slip of the tongue. Lord, when the stuff that's happening around me makes it hard to breathe, I'm so grateful I can come to you and find rest and a chance to breathe again. Let's finish with a prayer. And we are on the blue here. So join me in praying the blue prayer. Dear God, please protect all those who are working from the NHS Thank you for all they are doing to protect us. Yes, Lord God, we thank you that the doctors, nurses, the healthcare workers, the care home staff, doctor surgeries, all of these people who are working for the NHS are still working super hard to keep us safe, Father. Uh, and we just pray that you would give them rest, that you would give them peace, you would give them energy, Father, to continue their work. And I'd like to extend that to anybody who has a job that faces the public, whether it's shopkeepers or, uh, I can't think of others, but those people who come into contact with lots of people day in, day out. I pray, Lord, that you would keep them safe and give them your peace. And Father, we do thank you uh, uh, that it is amazing that you created our bodies to, to breathe. We don't have to think about it. But Lord, for the times that we notice that our breathing is difficult because we're frightened, we're scared, we're anxious, we're worried. Lord, when we struggle to breathe because of fear and, and uncertainty, Lord God, we, we thank you that we can come to you and that you are there, you are listening to us and you are ready to help us if we just reach out and call on you. And we thank you, Lord, that your promise tells us that you are always with us and that you're always there for us. Amen. Have a great couple of days, uh, whatever you're up to. I hope the weather's going to be a little bit brighter. It's a bit cool, a bit chilly and a bit overcast, isn't it? So it likes some nice sunny weather again. Uh, but whatever you're doing, have a lovely couple of days and join me again on Friday for some more bedtimes, uh, for more story time. <laughs> I'm getting my, t my words in a medal tonight. Take care, everyone. I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.